know something of racing, don't you, Watson? I ought to, Holmes. I pay for it with about half my wound pension. Well, then I shall make you my handy guide to the turf. Does the name Sir Robert Norberton recall anything? Of Shoscombe Old Place? Mm -hmm. Once horsewhipped Sam Brewer, the Curzon Street moneylender on Newmarket Heath. Oh, oh, oh. that's the man. Oh, he nearly killed him. Yes, he's one of those fellows who should have been a Regency buck. Uh, great eye for the ladies. Boxer, athlete, rider... Came second in the National a few years ago. Ah. But they say he's lost a fortune on the turf as well. So, oh. Can you give me some idea of Shoscombe Old Place? Hmm. In Berkshire. The Shoscombe Stud and Training Quarters are there. And the head trainer is John Mason. Hmm? You needn't look surprised, my dear Watson. He was due here some minutes ago. But do let us have some more about Shoscombe. I seem to have struck a rich vein. Well, um... There are the Shoscombe Spaniels, Holmes. Uh -huh. You hear of them at every dog show. Oh. They're the special pride of the lady of Shoscombe Old Place. Sir Robert Norberton's wife? Oh, no, 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 he's never married. He lives with his widowed sister, Lady Beatrice Falder. The place belonged to her late husband. Norberton has no claim on it at all. When she dies, it reverts to her husband's brother. So she only has a life interest in it? That's right. She draws the rents... And Norberton spends them. <laughs> Still, I have heard that she's devoted to him. Capital, Watson. An admirable thumbnail sketch. And here, I expect, is the man who can fill in the detail. Come in. Yes, Holmes? Come in, Mr. Mason. This is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you do, sir? How do you do? You have my note, Mr. Holmes? Yes. But it explained nothing. It was too delicate to put on paper, and too complicated. Well, here we are at your disposal. Take a seat, Mr. Mason. Thank you. First of all, Mr. Holmes, I think my employer, Sir Robert Norberton, has gone mad. This is Baker Street, not Harley Street. But why do you say that? Oh, well, sir, when a man does one or two odd things, there may be a meaning to it. But when everything he does is odd, you begin to wonder. I reckon Shoshkin Prince and the Derby between them have turned his brain. Shoshkin Prince is a coat Sir Robert has entered, Holmes. Ah, thank the you. The best in England. But I'll be playing with you, gentlemen, because I know this won't go beyond this room. I right. Sir Robert has got to win this derby. It's his last chance. Everything he can raise or borrow is on that horse, and at big odds, too. Big odds? With a horse as good as that? Ah, the public don't know how good he is, Dr. Watson. Sir Robert has the prince's half-brother out for spins. You can't tell him apart. Oh, I see. If there are two lengths in a furlong between them when it comes to a gallop. Yeah, if the prince fails him... Ah, uh, he's done. It seems a rather desperate gamble. But where does madness come in? Well, you've only got to look at him. His eyes are, are wild. He's, he's down at the stables at all hours. Then there's the way he behaves to Lady Beatrice. What is that? Well, they've always been the best of friends. She loves the horses as much as he does. Called to see Shoshkin Prince every day. But that's all over now. Why? For a week... She's driven past the stables without so much as a good morning to me or anyone. You suspect a quarrel? Why else would he give away her own pet spaniel? Her spaniel? No, she loved it as if it was her child. But he gave it away a few days ago to Old Barnes, who keeps the Green Dragon near Clendel. Well, strange indeed. Of course, what with her weak heart and dropsy, she couldn't get about with Sir Robert. But he used to spend a couple of hours with her in her room every evening. Well, that's all over, too. Never goes anywhere near her. Everything's changed, Mr. Holmes. And something's going on, mark my words. There is something more, then? That there is, sir. Night after night, the master sneaks off down to the crypt at the old ruined church in the park. Now, there's not many in our parts would think of going there by night. Oh, haunted, no doubt. Ah, you may smile, Doctor. But it's had a bad name amongst us for generations. Anyway, there he goes every night, wet or fine. You get more and more interesting, Mr. Mason. But how do you know all this? Well, it was uh, Stevens, the coachman, noticed him sneaking up first of all and told me. None of our business, perhaps you'll say. But we went after him. We waited behind the bush and saw him go inside the crypt. He was gone a long time. Oh, all right, Fred. It'll be a bad job for us if he spots us. Ah, he's, he's no respect to a person's when he gets started. Still, I, I mean to see this out, Mr. Mason. Well, we shan't see much from here. Hey, he's coming out now. Keep down, then. You'll come past these bushes. Shh. Well, he wasn't carrying nothing. So where does that get us? Fred, 
I'm going to take a look inside. Come on. Inside? Oh, oh I don't know, Mr. Oh, Bishop. come on, man. If the master can go in there and come out safe, I reckon we can. Well... Wait out here for me, if you like, then. No, no, I'll come. The door will be locked anyway. Well, it isn't. Oh. Can't hear anything. I reckon there's anyone else here. D down the steps, then. There's nothing up here. Right, oh. Got your lantern? Ah, hang on while I light up. That's it. Well, there's no one there. No one. And nothing. Then that's that. We can be getting back. What's that over there? What? That's funny. It, it, it's bones. Bones in a skull. It is, too. Now, I was down here some time back when the master sent Higgins to see those gypsies weren't camping out in the place. And these weren't there then. Mr. Mason, you, you don't reckon... No, me. no, they're old bones. These might be hundreds of years old. But where have they come from? Why should anyone drag them out and leave them lying like this? Oh, this beats me, Fred. It beats me. And beat us both it did, Mr. Holmes. You left the bones where they were? Yes, lying in a corner with a bit of old board over them. And now, take a look at this. A piece of the bone? No, sir, not them. There's a central heating furnace under Lady Beatrice's room. It had been off for some time, but Sir Robert started complaining of the cold, so it was started up again. Then the other morning, when one of the boys was raking out the cinders, he found this charred bone. What do you make of this, Watson? It is the upper condyle of the human femur. Exactly. Well, these are deep waters indeed. When did Sir Robert give away his sister's dog? Just a week ago today. It was howling outside the old well house, and Sir Robert was in one of his tantrums that day. I thought he'd have killed it. But he gave it to one of the jockeys and said to take it over to old Barnes of the Green Dragon. He said he never wanted to see it again. Thank you. Now, who keeps Lady Beatrice Falder company most of the time? Her maid, Carrie. Mm -hmm. She's been with her, oh, about five years. Her husband, Norlet, he's the footman. Both, no doubt, devoted servants. Oh, you need to be devoted to keep a job with Sir Robert. What he tells anyone to do, they do, and no questions. Uh -huh. Tell me, Mr. Mason, is there good fishing in that part of Berkshire? Fishing, sir? Well, yes, uh, there are trout in the mill stream, pike in the whole lake. That's good enough. Dr. Watson and I are famous fishermen. Are we? In fact, Mr. Mason, you may address us in future at the Green Dragon Crendel. We should reach it tonight. I need hardly say that we do not wish to be seen with you down there, but a note will reach us if you want it. Yes, thank you, Mr. Barnes, my friend and I are very comfortable indeed, very comfortable. Yes, very, very, very comfortable indeed. Tell me, what do you think about the Hall Lake and the chance of a pike? The oh. Hall? <laughs> you might find yourself in the lake before you were finished. I don't quite follow you. It's Sir Robert Norberton, sir. He's terrible jealous of touts. Touts? Beg pardon, sir. But if you two strangers were as near his training quarters as that, he'd be after you, sure as fate. I think I did hear that he has a horse entered for the derby. He's carrying all our money and his own, too. Begging your pardon, gentlemen, I suppose you ain't on the turf yourselves. Certainly not. <laughs> no, no, indeed. Just two weary Londoners who badly need some good Berkshire air. Mm. No, by the way, Mr. Barnes, I wanted to ask you, what breed is that beautiful spaniel I saw in the passage just now? Ah. Uh. That's the real Shoscombe breed, sir. Oh. There's no better in England than that. Really? What, what price would a dog like that cost? More than I could pay, sir. It was Sir Robert himself who gave me this one. He'd be off back to the hall in a jiffy if I gave him his head. Now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen... I'll... Yes, of course. Well, Holmes, I think, Watson, we might do well to enter the sacred domain tomorrow night before Norberton returns. Have you any theory? Only this. Something happened a week or two ago which has cut deep into the life of the Shoscombe household. What was it? You can only guess at it from its effects. And they seem to be of a curiously mixed character. The brother no longer visits the beloved invalid sister. He gives away her favorite dog, her dog, Watson. Does that suggest nothing to you? Nothing but the brother's spite. Well, there is an alternative. 
But to continue our view of the situation, the lady keeps her room, alters her habits, is not seen, save when she drives out with her maid and refuses to stop at the stables even to greet her favourite horse. Let us suppose, therefore, that Sir Robert Norberton has done away with his sister. Who? He's utterly in debt. And may at any moment be sold up and his racing stable seized by his creditors. He's a daring and desperate man. He derives his income from his sister. His sister's maid and her husband are his willing tools. That's true. But he could not fly the country until he had realised his fortune. And that fortune could only be realised by bringing off his win with Shoscombe Prince. Therefore, if he had disposed of his sister, he would still have to stand his ground. He would have to get rid of her body in some way. With the servants as his confidants, that would not be impossible. The body might be conveyed to the crypt, which is seldom visited, and it might later be secretly destroyed at night in the furnace, leaving behind it such evidence as we have seen. What say you to that, Watson? Monstrous! Well, I think there is a small experiment which we may try tomorrow. In the meantime... If we mean to keep up our characters, I suggest we call for a glass of wine and hold some high converse upon eels and dace and that sort of thing. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Mr. Barnes. Why, I should have thought you'd been away to your fishing long before this. As a matter of fact, Mr. Barnes, my friend here rather foolishly forgot to pack our spoon bait for Jack. Uh, uh, and as we uh, gather there's uh, none to be had hereabouts, we shall just have to forget about the fish. <laughs> it's only an excuse to get away from London, really, you know. <laughs> oh, well, there's some very nice walking in these parts. As a matter of fact... I was just wondering, to my friend, whether you might be persuaded to let us take that dog of yours along with us. If you can be bothered with him, I reckon he'll be glad of the exercise. I don't seem to get ten minutes to call me home these days. I'll go and fetch him now. This is Shoscombe Old Place, Holmes. Doesn't the poor dog know it? Hmm. Now, I learn that the old lady's carriage comes through here almost precisely every midday as she starts out for her drive. It's nearly midday now. Are you hoping for a glimpse of her? More than that. The carriage has to slow down while the gates are being opened for it. Now, when it comes through, and before it gathers speed again, I want you to stop the coachman with some question. Oh, oh well, very well. As you do, I shall accidentally lose my hold on this good dog's lead. But quickly, Watson. I can see the carriage in the driveway now. You know what to do? Yes, yes, all right, Holmes. Right on, mate. I say, coachman. Yes, sir. Uh, pardon me. Can you tell me, is Sir Robert Norberton at home today? No, sir, he ain't back from London yet. Oh, well, uh, I see. cause enough excitement. Well, what did you see? There just seemed to be two of them in the carriage. The maid, perhaps, and the old lady. And yet... Yes, Watson? Well, the dog. That snarl, exactly. He recognized his mistress's carriage, but found a stranger inside it. Dogs don't make mistakes. But did you notice anything else? Well, I did think that voice, uh, the one that called to him to drive on, it sounded more like a man's. And we have added one more card to our hand. But it needs cattle playing all the same. I think we will arrange for another rendezvous this evening with our friend Mr. John Mason. And I think the Norberton Crypt would be as good a place as any. I can't stay long, sir. The moment Sir Robert arrives home, you'll want to see me to get the latest news of Shoshkamp Prince. In that case, Mr. Mason, you can just show us the bones you spoke of and leave us to it. They're here in this corner. If you could shine your lantern, Dr. Watson... Well, here? There's nothing here. Oh, yes, sir. But they've gone. As I expected. I fancy their ashes might even now be found in that furnace you told us about. But why in the world would anyone want to burn the bones of someone who's been dead maybe hundreds of years? That is what we are here to find out. It may mean a long search, and we need not detain you. Then I'll be off, if you don't mind, sir. I don't want the master to find me missing... 
Now, Watson, let us have a closer look at some of these tombs. What do you hope to find, Holmes? Hmm? I said, what do you hope to find? Aha. Uh-huh. What have we here? A coffin on its end. Made of lead from the look of it. And unless I am very much mistaken, recently tampered with. Just let me get my lens to it. Some light, please. Yes, yeah, very well. <laughs> Yes, as I thought. Uh, someone has tried to open it. And succeeded, I should say. I think we shall now do the same with the assistance of my trusted Jimmy. <laughs> Always prepared, Holmes. One never knows. Uh, easy. Just to pull Watson, if you please. And we have it. Now then. Uh, Holmes! This is no ancient corpse. This is this. Someone's coming. Too late to hide. Who the devil may you be? What are you doing on my property? My name is Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? Possibly it is familiar to you. But in any case, my business is that of every other good citizen to uphold the law. It seems to me that you have much to answer for, Sir Robert. Oh, it does, does it? For instance, who was, or is, the occupant of this coffin? (sighs) Very well, Mr. Holmes. Everything can be explained, I assure you. Appearances are against me, but... Everything is all right. I am pleased to hear it. You have gone pretty deeply into my affairs, Mr. Holmes. So you know in all probability that I am running a dark horse for the Derby and that everything depends on my success. I understand the position. I am dependent upon my sister, Lady Beatrice, for everything. I've always known that if she were to die, my creditors would be onto my estate like a flock of vultures. Everything would be seized. My stables, my horses, everything. Well, my sister did die. A week ago. And you told no one. How could I? If one word had got out, absolute ruin would have descended upon me within a matter of hours. If I could only stave things off for three weeks until the derby, all would be well. If your horse wins. Well, if he doesn't. But in any case, surely your bets on the race and your expectations from it would hold good. Even if your creditors did seize your estate. The horse would be part of my estate, and my chief creditor happens to be that same rascally fellow, Sam Brewer, whom I was once compelled to horsewhip on Newmarket Heath. If he got possession of the horse, he would simply withdraw him from the race. My bets would be void. My ruin would be complete. Sir Robert, of what did your sister die? Dropsy. It had plagued her for years. Has a doctor certified to that effect? No. I I catch your meaning. But I assure you, any doctor would certify that her end had been in no doubt for months now. And it occurred just too soon for you. Well, what did you do? Are you down there, sir? Ah, yes. Come down, Norlitz. Sir? Mr. Holmes, this is Norlitt, the husband of my late sister's maid, Carrie. They are two people upon earth who can substantiate what I say. Very well. As I told you, I thought if I could only stave things off until after the derby, all would be well. But obviously the body couldn't remain in the house, even though there was no need for anyone to enter a room but the maid. So, on the first night, Norlitt and I carried it out to the old well house. I disclaim all responsibility. As I might expect. However, the responsibility is mine. You concealed the body in the well house? Yes. But then there was a complication over my sister's spaniel. It used to follow her everywhere. It turned up at the well house door and stood there, yapping continuously. So you got rid of it to the landlord of the Green Dragon? Yes. Even so, I, I felt that some more secure place was needed for my sister's body, and Norlet and I carried it by night to the crypt. There was no indignity or irreverence, Mr. Holmes. Mm. It seemed to me it would be no unworthy resting place if we put her for some time in one of the coffins of our late husband's ancestors. They lie in what is still consecrated ground. Norlet and I... I disclaim all... All right. We opened the coffin, removed the contents, and placed my sister inside as you have seen her. As to the old relics, they were burnt in the furnace at night... It seemed better than to leave them lying there for intruders to disturb. After that, it was but a case of arranging for someone to ride daily in your late sister's carriage, wearing her clothes and keeping up the appearance that she was still alive and well. Just so. I imagine, Mr. Norlett, you disclaim all responsibility in this as well. I'd like to know who you think you... That will do, Norlett. You are quite right, Mr. Holmes. Norlett impersonated my sister and rode each day beside his wife. Deceiving everyone except an unhappy dog who wondered where his mistress had got to. And you, it seems... It is my business not to be deceived. It was my duty to bring the facts to light. And there I must leave it. 
As to the morality or decency of your own conduct, it is not for me to express any opinion. Ah, there you are, Watson. I thought I heard you go out a few minutes ago. Oh, uh, yes, I did. To buy a newspaper. <laughs> but our papers will be delivered before long, won't they? Oh, I know, I know, Holmes. But I wanted one before. Hmm? Really, Watson? You've been uncommonly excited all afternoon, and now you're looking as smug as a well-filled cat. Really let me into your secret. Do you know what today is, Holmes? Today? Hmm. Christmas? No, Easter. No. St. Swithin. No. No, I see nothing remarkable about it. This is Derby Day. The Derby was run this afternoon. Oh, really? Is that all? Oh, I should hesitate to bore you with the particulars. The Derby was won by a horse named Shoscombe Prince, of which you have doubtless heard. He carried with him the blessing of my month's wound pension, that is all. Ah, the name is familiar. Mm. Ah, ah. My dear Watson, do come and give me the benefit of your opinion upon this specimen. Mm? Really, if it were not for the microscope, I do not believe we should achieve half the results we managed to. Oh, really, Holmes. 